A roundup of the news now from Essex, Suffolk and Norfolk. And a soldier from the Royal Anglian Regiment killed in Afghanistan was today finally laid to rest. Private James Grigg, who was 21, died last month. His funeral took place close to the family home at Stradbrook in Suffolk. Kevin Birch was there. Aside from the church bells and the chill breeze, there was silence as the cortege drew close to All Saints. For James's parents, Michael and Pat, and sister Victoria, there is the deepest grief, in their words, a hole left in our hearts. But also there's the greatest pride. He was the village boy who became a Viking. For any young man who's growing up at the moment in our society, um, and you're looking for a role model, you should probably look no further than James. He was a, a credit to his family, to, to this county, and, and obviously to himself. And he'll be sadly, sadly missed by everybody, including us as a regiment. As the funeral began, Stradbrook was at a standstill, streets lined and shops closed. Inside the church, tributes from friends and teammates who shared his passion for cricket. I can't salute you, I'm a civilian. But rest assured that every time I and many others in this church get into our cricket whites and take to the field, we are doing it for you. It's terrible when soldiers are killed in their line of duty and we want to be here to support the Grigg family and to support one another as our soldiers are still out there too. James died on March the 16th, deep inside Taliban territory. Today was the final part of his journey home, the final farewell. As the poet Joseph Drake once wrote, and they who for their country die shall fill an honoured grave, for glory lights the soldier's tomb, and beauty weeps the brave. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East, in Stradbrook. One man has died and six more people injured after a head-on crash in Norfolk involving two cars and a motorbike. It happened yesterday at Langham near Holt. A local man was killed and two other people were critically injured, including a teenage driver. Detectives from Scotland Yard have been to Kenya as part of a new inquiry into the murder of Julie Ward from Suffolk more than 20 years ago. Her remains were found in the Masai Mara Game Reserve in 1988. Nobody has been convicted of her murder. Detectives investigating the disappearance of a mother from Basildon 10 years ago have arrested a man on suspicion of murder. Officers have been at Nicola Ray's old home in Boise Gardens all day. The mother of two was 29 when she disappeared in May 2000. The digging began this afternoon. The team included forensic archaeologists. Every spadeful scrutinised. Neighbours said it wasn't the first search. They've done the same sort of thing that they're doing now a couple of times, I say, in the last, I don't know how many years. Nicola Ray was a 29-year-old mother of two. She vanished on May the 2nd, 2000. She'd been on a night out in Basildon and was last seen leaving a friend's house on a nearby estate to walk home. That was at about 1.30 in the morning, despite extensive inquiries in both Essex and Liverpool, where she had friends. There's been no trace of her. The Basildon cul-de-sac where she lived was cordoned off this morning. She was sharing this house with her fiancé when she disappeared. Today's search centred on the garage, and it began with this piece of specialist equipment. The technology that we're using today is a radar technology, which we're then scanning the area of this garage to look where there are any anomalies underneath the floor to then um, show the officers where we need to start digging today. And now they're using uh, X-ray equipment to search the concrete. Oh. When reporters told neighbours what was happening, some appeared shocked. The media were invited to film the digging team. It moved in because the radar did find areas that needed further investigation. And as the search went on, a 47-year-old man from Basildon, arrested on suspicion of murder, continued to be questioned. Gareth George, BBC Look East. Hundreds of chickens died after the crates they were in fell off a trailer during the morning rush hour in Essex. The accident happened on Edinburgh Way in Harlow, closing the road for nearly four hours. About a thousand chickens escaped and commuters caught up in the tailbacks helped to round them up. 
In football, all of our teams in League One play tonight. Norwich can move a step closer to promotion if they win at Leighton Orient. Colchester are at Charlton. A win for the U's will boost their playoff hopes. South End, meanwhile, are at home to Brentford. Now, some like it hot, some like it very hot. And if you're one of those, Suffolk was the place to be today. A local company which makes sauces and preserves has been chopping up thousands of some of the hottest chilies in the world. The Scotch bonnet chilli is hot, about 40 times hotter than Tabasco sauce. The Suffolk company Jules and Sharpie has imported 140 kilos of Scotch bonnets from Uganda. But someone's got to wash them, chop them and mince them. Usually I'm wearing a mask and now I haven't got my mask on. The chilies are really getting to my throat, which is why I'm finding it quite difficult to talk. We work from 8.30 to 5 and after a day of that, I can tell you that's enough. The chilies are washed, then halved, and any brown seeds are removed. The hottest part of the chili is the white membrane the seeds are attached to. And every time the chili is cut, it gives off its chemicals. In chili circles, they say women are better at coping with it than men. It's quite interesting because of the colour and the shapes of the chilies, but it is difficult because of the fumes that they give out. But you do get immune to it after a while. The halved chilies then go into the mincer, and at this point, you really need a face mask or coughing is guaranteed. As well as a mask, they wear two pairs of gloves, arm shields, and sometimes goggles. Even then, accidents do happen. We get it in our eyes, we get it on our arms, it sneaks inside your arm shields, it gets on your... Eye, everywhere. And what's it feel like? It feels like the worst burning you can imagine. Jules and Sharpie sell their products here and export to five countries. It's a tough job, but if you want to make chilli preserves, someone's got to do it. Ian Barmer, BBC Look East, Suffolk. You're watching Look East.